All right, hello everyone. It is time to do another pattern focus. Scroll down here. Do this one. Rosa. I think I've done this one before. It doesn't show it here, but I have this feeling I've done this one before. It's pretty. Come on. Give me the big picture. There we go. We're doing that. Don't be scared. That looks like it's really hard to do. It's not. We can do this. Let's look at how pretty it is though. Okay. So we're starting with a teardrop. Just start with a teardrop. Step number two from the bottom of that teardrop, we're going to do like a little claw type shape, a half a moon, right? And we're going to do another one right there. And then inside, we're going to do a curve, a curve, and a little pointy bit. That's the middle. And then, I'm going to do this little aura here, and a little curve there, and a little coming down there. And then we're going to do some petal-like shapes. So you do two, and then you do some around. Right there and then this little shape here that finishes off the flower part and then if you want you can add leaves around the outside of it so I'm just going to do one big one middle of page I think that will be the best thing to do uh, Use the pink peach paper. A little curvy. Let me flatten it out a little. That's better. Okay. So I want this middle piece to be kind of right in here, right? Maybe a little smaller. I want room for petals and leaves. So, step number one is to do a teardrop. Nice curvy teardrop. Step number two is to do a, a crescent moon like shape over here, like a claw. And then another one here. And then in here is this, and this, and that. And then we're going to do this. We're going to fill in there. We're going to fill in there like that. I'm going to actually fill in here too. And that shape. Okay. My petal is not quite as compact. I got more of a, a oval shape rather than a round shape on my in, inside piece, but that's okay. <clears throat> So then we're going to do one petal shape here and one petal shape here. And then we can do, oops, uh oh, that was the wrong shape. Just gonna leave that for the moment. Something like that.
something like that. And then we can do leaf shapes. Something like that. Now I'm going to play and embellish. Now I can answer questions. Uh, where were we? Can you change the oil on a car? Do I know how? Like, what is the method? Yes, I know how. Have I ever actually physically done it? And do I think I could actually physically do it? No, probably not. Have you ever gotten a speeding ticket? No. Have you ever ran out of gas? I myself personally have not. However, my husband is famous, well, not famous, but when we were uh, dating, I'll tell you a story, when we were dating, he, uh, he bought a car that was very modern for its day and it had a voice warning system um, he named it I don't remember what he named it he named the voice it was a female voice he named the voice and um, and that warning system would tell you when you were low on gas. So instead of just a little light on the dashboard, he would actually get a little voice that came out of somewhere that said, fuel level is low. Fuel level is low. And it would tell you that, you know, once. And then when it got kind of low, it would, it would tell you that once. And then it would stop for a while. And then if you didn't go get gas and it got lower, when it started to get down to, like, you were really going to run out of gas, it wouldn't be quiet. It would just keep going. Fuel level is low. Fuel level is low. Fuel level is low. <clears throat> it drove him crazy. And um, because he was one who likes to just drive until he's, like, completely out of gas. I liked it because... I'm one of those people who fills up like somewhere between a half and a quarter of a tank. I like always have gas in my car. I, I don't know why. It's just one of those things. I think part of it had to do with when I first started driving. It was back in the gas rationing uh, days back in the 70s when you um, had to line up at a gas station on your even or odd days. And gas was super expensive and, you know, everybody was worried that we were going to run out of gas. And so, you know, you like always had gas in your car because you never knew um, when you were going to need to drive somewhere and it wasn't your day to fill up gas. So you weren't allowed to go get gas if you ran out of gas. It was really weird. So... Um, yeah, you were, 
you either were allowed to fill up on an even numbered day or an odd numbered day and and I would choose the gas station at the bottom of the hill um, we lived in, in the foothills and I would go up Santa Anita and get in line to the gas station that was at the corner on the downhill side because then I could sit in line and not have my engine on and coast into the gas station and I would not waste my gas as I was sitting there in line waiting to go get gas and I don't know if any of you guys are old enough to remember that but if you're not it's crazy that we used to have to do that and 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 it could take it could take an hour and a half to go get gas because there are so many people in line it, it was it was nuts absolutely nuts and I think from that experience because that was when um, I first started driving that I I got in a habit of never having my tank empty so I've never really actually run out of gas I always get gas fairly soon um, right around a quarter of a tank is where I'm most comfortable um, but my husband would let it go much lower and so uh, when we were on a date, which turned out to be the day that uh, he proposed to me, um, yeah, he had turned off the voice because he didn't want it bugging him. He found it to be rather distracting and, and he didn't want it bugging him. And so... He thought, oh, we've got plenty of gas. We had driven all the way down to the beach. So it was, you know, like, I don't know, 50, 60 miles to the beach. We'd had a nice romantic dinner. We'd walked on the beach. My husband had proposed to me on the water, uh, sand and, and waves, and it was beautiful. And oh, on the way home, we ran out of gas. So here I am in my lovely dress, uh, high heels, walking on the side of the freeway to go get gas. Not something I wanted to do, but it surely makes for a, quite the story of remembering the day that I was proposed to. That's for sure. Anyway, no, I don't usually run out of gas. Not my thing. And my husband's done it t to me twice. The the second time we ran out of gas, he, he was actually on the way to the gas station. We were in the left turn lane going to turn into the gas station when the car ran out of gas. It's like, really? That's too close. You really need to get gas sooner than that. So now when the little light comes on and says he's needs gas I, I really bug him so he has stopped doing that because I told him I'm not gonna walk anymore and I'm not gonna be stuck in the middle of traffic where you know you guys have to get out and push the car That's ridiculous I'm not gonna do it so he doesn't do that anymore that was some time ago all right Another, another, another question. Oh, I did that one. Uh, what is your favorite kind of sandwich? Uh, tuna and egg. I like tuna and egg. If it's going to be like a deli sandwich, I prefer ham ham and turkey
But if I'm going to make myself a sandwich at home, I tend to do a tuna and egg. The rest of my family think it's weird. But I think I've talked about this before and you guys say it's not weird. It's a thing. Tuna and egg. Um, my uh, great grandma would serve us tuna and egg. That's where I learned it. That's really pretty, huh? I think it needs it needs color. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just just do the white. All right, one more one more question. There's one more on this page, and then we can flip the page. Best thing to eat for breakfast. favorite breakfast food or the thing I eat every day because the thing I eat every day is not my favorite which doesn't make any sense you would think you would have your favorite thing for breakfast when you have it every day but it's too hard to make so um, usually every day daily for breakfast I will either have a bagel or I'll just have a, a protein protein drink uh, with milk. Uh, that's usually what I do because make it easy. But my very favorite breakfast food is um, Swedish pancakes or crepes. But they're too hard to make on a regular basis. You have to think ahead for those because you have to make up the, the batter like the day before so it has a chance to sit. My son's really good at it. But that's my favorite. That's why I go to IHOP. I can get Swedish pancakes with the butter on the side or German pancakes. They're all the same. Their, their crepes are all the same. So I'll, I'll get the crepes with the butter on the side because I don't want the, the flavored butter. I just want the crepe by itself plain. That's what I do. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, it just needs, it's going to be black and white. With lots of white. Most days, I'll either have a glass of milk with protein powder or, or a bagel and cream cheese. And occasionally, I'll make myself an egg. Matter of fact, I'm kind of in mood for eggs right now. Eggs and toast sounds really good. Maybe I'll have that for lunch. Super white. This one too. To be super white. And then it's going to get a little bit of color with some, I think it's going to be a pink. Yeah, it's going to be a pink. Pink, pink middle. Blend. 
that. And then some green. And some greenery. We're going to have... I need another question. New page. All right. What is your usual bedtime? Well, depends. If I'm working and I don't get off work till 10.30 at night, then I usually go to bed in the 11, somewhere between 11 and midnight. I try to get to bed before midnight. But if I don't get off work till 10.30, it's hard, hard to get to sleep before midnight. Um, but now, right now that I've been off work, I've been going to bed... around 9, 9.30. I'm usually asleep by 10. Sometimes not till 11, but usually asleep by 10. And I've been getting up earlier. I'm not really a morning person, but I've been getting up not long after my, after my husband leaves to go take his bike rides, which is, he gets up at 4.45 in the morning to go ride his bike. That's not me. But I've been getting up around somewhere between 6 and 7. Today I slept in. I, I didn't get up till 8 today. But I want this one. You guys are getting to know a lot about me with these questions, aren't you? Some of them are very weird. And I, like I said, I can tell that these are teeny bopper questions, some of them, but that's okay. You never know what kind of interesting insights might come from a weird teeny bopper question. And it needs a little darker in here.
And I think I want to put some yellow over the top of all of that to just blend it all. And give it just a little different color to it. Yeah. Almost done, folks. Just giving these leaves a, a quick once over with some yellow. There we go. You know, it kind of looks like a camellia. I like it. I know it says Rosa, but it kind of looks like a camellia. R O Z A. I think it's going to live. It doesn't really matter which way it lives, but I think it's going to live that way. Even though I drew it this way, I like it that way. Doesn't matter, does it? Okay, so that's done. I will see you guys tomorrow. You guys have a really great day. And I'm going to see if I can get a couple of Inktobers done today. And uh, see where we're at. I will see you later. Bye-bye.